torso target. So we're going to just return uh, a value here. So we'll do my root dot position minus. Yeah, actually, let's change this to a torso. We'll do torso dot position dot magnitude. So this is just going to return um, how far away we are from a specific torso that we give this function. So this will be this will save us some time instead of having to type out this math equation every single time. This will just simply return it, and all we gotta do is type in find distance from torso, and we'll already know we just want to find the distance from ourself. Okay, so let's move on here. Uh, next function we're gonna set up is the uh, check site function. So we'll do function check site target so the point of this function is going to be uh, checking if we have a direct line of sight to the um, to whatever we're trying to get to so we'll do local ray equals ray dot new uh, starting the starting point for the ray is going to be my root down position and then we need to give this the uh, direction so target down position minus my root dot position dot unit times 200 okay so this is ray casting uh, this is the starting position of the uh, ray and this is going to be the direction based off of uh, where the enemy target is standing and then we just subtract it from our position and we find the unit of that and that gives us the direction we need to go to get directly to the target and then we're shooting 200 studs in that direction. So uh, we only we will only see targets that are within 200 studs of ourselves, with it, which is more than enough uh, distance for what we're doing this for. So then we're going to do local hit uh, position equals workspace find part on ray with ignore list, and then we'll just plug in our ray there. And then for the ignore list, we just um, add ourselves. So script parent. And uh, we are we are ignored, so it won't hit our arms or something, or our you know <clears throat> upper torso or lower torso when we're checking, see if we hit anything. So now we will do if hit then. So if we hit anything uh, when trying to get to uh, the target, so we're gonna be shooting a ray towards the target. If we hit any blocks, then this is going to have a value. Then we're gonna continue. So then we will do another check here. So if hit is descendant of target dot parent, then return true. So if the hit is like a body part, any body part of the target parent, then we will return true. So if we hit the target right arm, the target head, the target leg, then all of those are valid lines of sight to the target and that will return true. If we don't return true, then we're gonna just return false down there, okay? The next function we're gonna be setting up here is the uh, find target function. So we're gonna do function find target. And this is just going to search the workspace for valid targets for us to chase down and uh, kill. So essentially just tracking down the criminals so we can kill them. So uh, we're gonna do local distance is 200. You can change distance to be whatever you want. Uh, local target is nil, so that's a placeholder for if we find a valid target while we're searching. So now we'll do for i v in i pairs workspace get children do. So that is going to search the workspace for every object in it, and then we're going to do some checks on every single object. So we'll do local human equals v find first child humanoid then we'll do local um, torso equals V find first child torso or V find first child humanoid root part okay so we will attack older you know r6 models or the newer r15 models it doesn't matter it will find torso or humanoid root part it does not care because essentially those two parts play the same role in a humanoid okay so um the next check we have to do is 
verify that they're there. So if human is there and if torso is there, then continue. Next, we will check the distance. So we'll do if find distance from our torso and then we will check torso is less than distance. So if, um, if it's less than 200, the distance from us to the uh, target torso is less than distance, then we will continue. That's valid and within our range. Uh, next, we want to verify that the uh, human is alive. So human.health is greater than zero. So if it's within our range and the humanoid is alive, then we will run one last check. And that is that our name, that the name of whatever we're locked onto right now is not on the allies list. So let's go ahead and do four Y, X in I pairs. Allies do. Okay, good. So for Y, X, and I pairs allies. So you know allies we defined up above as a uh, table with all our allies names in there. We will just loop through. So we'll do if X equals to uh, V dot name, then break. Else if Y equals to number allies, then target equals torso. And distance equals find distance from torso, torso. Okay, so essentially what this is doing, if um, if we do find that V is one of our allies names, then we're gonna break out of this, this loop here, and we're not gonna, we're not gonna assign the torso as the target because if their name is on the ally list, then we don't want to attack them. So we'll just break this and we'll skip over them and move on to the next potential target. Okay, and then the next thing we have down here is Y is going to be the, the iteration count. So if we're on the last iteration count of how many, how many allies we have, and we've gone through all the names, none of the names match, uh, in our allies list, then we can assume that is a valid target and we can go ahead and uh, attack that and be, be rest assured that this uh, target here is not one of our allies and names. Okay, so that's good for the most part. Then at the bottom, we just need return target. All right, and then we are good to go with our find target function. Uh, next thing we're going to set up is our uh, pathfinding to the target. So we we'll do function path to target, target, and then we're going to set up our pathfinding variable. So local path equals game get service pathfinding service create path with default uh, parameters as usual. Uh, path compute async. Starting position is going to be my root dot position. Ending position will be target dot position. Easy enough. Um, then we're going to get our waypoints. So local waypoints equals game, not game, sorry. Path get waypoints. Okay. And then we are going to loop through. We're going to check First, if the uh, path is successful, so if path.status equals to enum.pathstatus.success, then continue, else path failed. Get that placeholder in there for now. So now we will loop through all of our waypoints. So we do 4i uh, waypoint in i pairs waypoints do. And then we will first check and see if our waypoint needs us to jump. So if waypoint dot action equals to enum dot waypoint action dot jump, then and this this is a uh, if there. So there we go. I'll put an end there. So if uh, if the action is jump, then we will say my human jump 
equal to true. That'll be good. Next, we'll have our human go ahead and just move to uh, wherever we need it to. So v dot uh, waypoint dot position. Okay, so current waypoint that we're on, we'll move to it. Um, then we will pause the script again using that uh, same event. So move to finished, wait, and uh, that'll return if it finishes successfully or not. So we will do if not move success, then break, uh, break, break out if we don't get there successfully. Uh, next check we will do is if check site target is true, then break. So if we are pathfinding to uh, one of the criminals and we can see the criminal, then we're just going to go ahead and break out of the pathfinding and just have our police officer run directly to the criminal because if if we have a direct line of sight then there's nothing in the way then there's no point in wasting resources using pathfinding so um let's continue here so we'll do if i is dividable by five equals to zero then so every fifth waypoint that we get to we will do another check so if find target not equal to target, then break. So this means if we run that find target function and target is no longer the closest target to us, then we will just go ahead and try to get to a different target, a uh, closer one, essentially. Okay, and so if the uh, pathfinding does fail, we will just put a, a wait one in there and then hopefully the next time through it can actually generate a successful path. Um, yeah, so that should be good there. Okay, and let's go ahead and set up our main function now. So function main, and then we'll do our while loop. So while wait, uh, yeah, while wait do, and then we will do if my human dot health is less than one, then just break the entire script because if we're dead, we don't need to be searching for criminals. Uh, after that, we will just call upon the main function and go from there. Let's go ahead and set up our, our logic in here. So we'll do local uh, target equals find target. And we'll do if we have a target, then continue. If we can see the target, then continue. Uh, if we cannot see the target, then we'll put can't see, fill that out, no, fill that out in a second there. Um, let's just put in here, if we can, if we have a direct line of sight to the target, then we will just have my human move to target dot position, make sure that works. And then if we can't see the target, then we need to do pathfinding. So we'll do path to target, target. And then if we have no target, then we will wander. Okay, simple enough. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the workspace here and see how many beautiful errors we have in our code there. Okay, he's moving. And as you can see, he runs directly towards the criminal now. He doesn't have any weapons, <clears throat> so it doesn't really do much, but at least he's trying his best now. So let's move him aside. Let's verify the pathfinding works. So you can see he goes around the building perfectly fine. And now the pathfinding is turned off. Now he's just running straight towards the criminal. So it looks like that logic there works pretty well. So the next thing we need to have him do is uh, draw his weapon or draw his baton based on how close he is to the criminal. So let's go ahead and set up those functions now. For main, we're gonna set up the function draw, draw gun. <clears throat> and we'll do if gun holstered is equal to false, then continue. And then we will set gun holstered equals to false or equal to true. My bad. And then we will <clears throat> go ahead and uh, play the equip sound. So actually, let's make a note in here. 
Um, in here, we do need to holster the baton. So if we uh, draw the gun, we want to make sure we holster the baton just to be safe. So once we add the holster baton function, then we will enable that comment. So now we will play the equip sound for our gun. Okay. And then we are going to do... We are going to do some, some very, very sketchy programming to make him draw his gun. So <clears throat> we need to mess with the, uh, the, the uh, joints, motors essentially, and we need to activate those welds now. So this is going to be ugly, but it's going to work, okay? So we're going to say right shoulder, shit, well, right shoulder dot part one equals nil and then we're going to we're going to say right upper arm dot c frame is equal to aimer dot c frame times c frame dot angles math dot brad 90 zero zero okay so this is going to uh weld we're going to get our upper arm in position with the aimer so we can move it around properly. And then we're going to weld it. So we will do right shoulder weld dot part one equals right upper arm. So with that, we will move our right upper arm into position and then weld it into place. So it will follow around the aimer as we have this guy actually aim the gun. Okay. So, <clears throat> next thing we need to do here is the same thing with the right elbow. So, right elbow dot part one equals nil. And then we will do right lower arm dot C frame equals right upper arm dot C frame times C frame dot new zero negative five zero so that's going to move our right lower arm like directly beneath our <clears throat> our upper arm so it's going to get all of our arm pieces in a straight line with no rotation essentially is what this is doing uh, we're also removing the right elbow part one motor piece so that way we don't break the motor when we weld all this stuff together so that way it doesn't mess with the animation once we put the gun away. Um, and the next thing we need to do here is set the weld, I believe. Yeah, so right elbow weld dot part one equals right lower arm. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with the wrist. So right wrist dot part one equals nil. And then right hand dot C frame equals right lower arm dot C frame times C frame dot new zero zero uh, zero point five negative and then zero and then we're going to do right wrist weld dot part one equals right hand okay. So that mess, mess of code there is going to get our arm in position in a straight line so we can properly point the gun around at the criminals and it's going to look amazing. Okay, so then we're going to set the gun weld, part zero. Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this.